You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Beauty and the Beast After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Beauty and the Beast After Show. Hey everybody, I'm Ali Kona Bradford and welcome to After Buzz TV. Bing is for doing and on this beautiful Thursday evening we are doing Beauty and the Beast. And joining me tonight is Paige Sullivan. Yes, hello. Always here with a great opinion. I love talking oh, to you by the way. You, thank you. You're very welcome. So we are in episode six entitled Worth. And I can't believe it's already been six weeks to be honest with you. No, it's me gone by either. so quickly. But Today, we got to see a little bit of a love triangle going on. Sorry, I just thought the Beastie Boys would be appropriate. Oh, th oh, oh, yeah, cute. it doesn't really fit the episode. Ba -dum -dum oh, boo. That's what I give oh. it. A oh, thumbs down. oh, ouch. ouch. <laughs> I'm crying. Oh. Aw. So anyways, before we were interrupted by the extra input, um, <laughs> <laughs> we want to talk about Beauty and the Beast and about Catherine and Vincent. We start to see a little bit more of their relationship and a little bit more of a kind of push and pull going on as to whether or not they should be involved. Um, we see a little bit more of Evan trying to work mm -hmm. his way into the picture. But Ethan? Ethan? Ethan. No. <laughs> oh, I thought I messed it no, up. No, it is Evan. <laughs> Evan. <laughs> I just wish his name was Ethan. I know. That's okay. Evan's Evan bothered me this episode. He did. He was a little bit, uh, not a creep, but... Not creepy. He's just too... Too sure of himself. Too sure yeah. he can get cat. Too sure yeah. they're going to end up together. Yeah. And it's just, it's like he's imposing. And yeah. I don't like it. Yeah. Well, I mean, she said to him, you know, you're really confident. And he said, no, I'm just patient. I'm like, mm, yeah. okay. But the thing that kind of got me is that dad was helping Evan out a little bit. There was a invitation to come to dinner with dad and the super young fiance. He's yeah. like, why don't you bring that boy Evan? And they're like, mm. And yeah. of course, Kat's like, hello, no, and here's dad, and here's Evan, and they're having their own planned out dinner, like, yeah, I'll see you at seven, okay, I'll see you too. Hi, I'm going to dinner too, can I have an input? Yeah, I didn't really like it, I don't like that, if I was put in that situation, I would hope if the person's my friend and respects me, they would consider my opinion. Right. Um, but I feel like he's one of those guys who doesn't take no for an answer, and that's fine if you're that guy, but... I just, I just wish Vincent in this kind of love triangle that developed this episode would just Be a little more man aggressive. up. You're a beast, Hello? for God's sake. Right. Like, tell her what you're feeling. It's not right. that hard. Right. Well, JT was saying the same thing. There was a conversation between JT and Vincent that I thought was really interesting because at first, here's JT in the beginning of the series talking about, you know, stay away from her, this, this, and that. But now that JT's in love, all of a sudden it's like, well, just do tell her how you feel. Aww. Aww. I know, he's like pushing Vincent now to get into a relationship because he's in one. And I think right. it has a lot to do with the way his life has changed. He's right. happier, he's lighter, he's not so stressed out, and I think he wants that for Vincent as well. I think they both realized what they were doing before wasn't living a life. Right. It was really, really sad. Right. It was a sad, sad life. Well, it was interesting, JC. JC, wow. Mm -hmm. um, JT was even saying something about being normal. I'm like, look who's talking about being normal now all of a sudden. Yeah. You know? I liked it, though. I liked his influence on Vincent. For once, I felt like it was a push in the right direction, and it wasn't so much hide, hide, hide. Your life is in danger all the time. You're ruining everybody else's lives when you go out in public. Right. I mean, like I said last episode, I think, was, you know, what is the point if you're going to sit in a in a warehouse your whole life? Right. It's better to go out there and get killed by Nearfield than to live there hiding. Right. At least you tried. Yeah, I mean, what? I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. So, anyways, getting into the episode a little bit more, we open up with uh, Vincent. First of all, doesn't admit that he blacked out. He still hasn't, I think, told Cat quite yet. Not Cat. 
he told I, he told, he told JT. JT right 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 but he hasn't said it to Kat yet because she came in and she's talking to him about like so I like I waited for you he's like oh yeah I wasn't feeling well I, I don't he, think he tells her in the whole episode I don't think he ever tells no, her no that's what I'm saying yeah he never told yeah, her not what even, happened yeah not at all not even in when they've kind of reconciled everything yeah. I think he's scared yeah of what it would mean yeah and I think he's comfortable with telling JT because JT can maybe help him decipher what's happening uh, everything's completely normal Right. Supposedly, blood pressure is normal. All his other stats, I don't know, are normal. Right. Um, so it's kind of weird. But here's the thing. The whole episode was worked around the theme of being worthy and having worth. And I think one of the things that he's dealing with, and he mentioned somewhere later in the episode, is about being worth somebody else's time, if you will, their love, their everything else. And he's in a position where because he's a beast now, he doesn't feel like he's worthy of that type of love, and especially from Catherine. So on the outside, it's like he's pushing her in the direction of, yeah, go ahead and, you know, you can kiss whoever you want and mm -hmm. be whoever you want. And on the inside, he's feeling completely opposite. And uh, he keeps on kicking his own butt because that even happened last episode where he's like, yeah, do whatever. But as soon as he sees it in his face, it's like, oh, yeah, it's, a, it's okay. a difference between wanting what's right and wanting what you want. I mean, right. the heart wants what it wants, and if he wants Catherine, then he's not going to be able to stop it. And right. she obviously wants something with him, and right. so it's sad to see them both. They're both pushing each other away. Right, right. So how is it supposed to work like that? Right. But they keep getting drawn together, yeah. and I think it's just a matter of time before they both succumb to what, you know, what they are feeling and right. what they want. And because this whole episode also revolved around Kat trying to decide whether she should go with a simple relationship, one that's easy yes. and yes. no strings really attached, uh, like Nearfield, um, yeah. with Evan. Right. I want to say Ethan. With Evan or go for what she's feeling with. Right. But here's the thing. This is what I wanted to talk about. And I kind of mentioned it during the episode, but I was like, let me hold my tongue so we can talk about oh, it. Yes, you did. Okay. So I feel like this episode, for me, I thought it was really relatable because the thing with Vincent is he is that we don't have a title. We're in between. We like each other. We don't know, like, the boundaries. So if it was or was not okay to kiss Evan, I don't know. But I feel guilty. But why should I feel guilty when he's not my boyfriend? But... I don't know if he wants to be. So he's now deemed Mr. Complicated, like when she's talking about him to Tess or whatever. But the thing is, is that she's left in that undetermined area of I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's so relatable because that's just what it feels like. I Like this whole generation of I'm bringing personal, not just me, but things I've heard from other females is it's gotten to a point where a lot of things are undefined these days you have to define the relationship exactly a dtr exactly yeah i don't know i don't think they obviously they haven't done that and i don't even know if they do do that that it will make it any easier True. but i think it will make it clearer well, then, what they're getting into well yeah but then then she doesn't have to even think about evan because the whole reason i feel like she's even like stepping into the idea of Evan is because it's, she's trying so hard to get her mind off of Vincent because she's like, well, he's wishy-washy. He doesn't know what he wants. I'm tired of waiting around for Mr. I don't know what I want. So I'm just going to go with who wants me at the moment, which happens to be Evan. He's giving her attention. He wants to be with her. He's simple. So she's like, you know what? Maybe I will try this out. Yeah, I think. But it's not what her heart wants. It's not what her heart wants. And Vincent kind of tells her how he's feeling at some Ish. point when he's, what he's, He's talking about the case, but he's saying she didn't think she was worth the love. Somebody was trying to convince her she wasn't worth it, that yeah. or that the relationship wasn't worth it. And you you know he's trying to get at what's between them. And we were hoping for a kiss there. Yeah, let's no, yeah, let's say let's no kiss this episode, which a little come frustrating. On. A little so close. How Six are you gonna episodes. tell somebody how much you want to be with them, and then nothing, nothing happens? Yeah, and at the end when they're in his apartment, which I still don't know if it's a dream. I, seen, I think it's you real, think though. it's yeah. real I think it's a dream because he blacks out after um I think it's a dream but they're talking and she's saying oh well they're kind of just kind of defining the relationship and saying that they want to be together right and then you think they're going to kiss again because it's kind of finally they're joking about it and they seem lighthearted and then she's like I'll see you later Vincent you're like what they haven't even I don't even know if they touch like I don't even yeah. know if they've hugged really I don't I, they've never hugged I've never seen them be physically like I think maybe they, maybe affectionate. yeah maybe like an arm touch I don't even think yeah. I've seen that yeah well you know let's get into the case though because I think the case is what leads her to the realization mm -hmm. a combination of the case and her father's relationship with his fiance lead her to the realization that he is worth the difficulty of 
you know, dealing with the struggles, of the being with him. obstacles. Exactly. Thank you yeah. for finishing my sentence. <laughs> yeah, because there's a lot of obstacles with yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, the case was not what I thought it was going to be. It wasn't what I thought it was going to be. I mean, the girl's walking into the art studio, and I'm like, oh, somebody's going to be dead in there. Right. Somebody's dead in there. And it's, you know, I feel like people tend to do that, to do that with murder mystery shows. Right. Uh, we're trying to guess what's happening, and we're constantly in our head, like, oh, yeah, who, who did it? Yeah. Who done it this time? Right. And so um, it was it was so strange. Right. Well, I was kind of, I went into it like, here we go again, another murder mystery. It's just going to be somebody got killed. It was a boyfriend, a wife, a husband, a mother, whatever. Completely different. We yeah. go into the situation thinking that that's what it's going to be. And there's this painter who he's murdered. And we're thinking it's because money he, of money. Exactly. Like he's getting 200 bucks for his painting and then they're selling it for $1,500. And it just seems like such a scam. And the more we delve into the case, it's like they're not even selling the paintings at all. That yeah. blew my mind. Well, because his paintings were selling at more than one gallery. But the gallery that he was that was getting the most for him, he wasn't getting nearly the his half of the right. pay and then he was selling the same exact paintings at another yeah. gallery for like a hundred dollars right. two hundred dollars right very strange but it, it all comes to light but it was very hard to keep up with at some well point. even the, even still if you saw the paintings if you guys watched the episode i don't know if you've missed it and you're just catching up with us but these paintings were just blah it was like someone took a can of blue or orange paint and just like threw it on the canvas and I get art is how you interpret things it's mm. all subjective but at the same time to sell something like that for $1,500 I think even when uh, the was it Tess Catherine and Evan go into the art gallery to look at these paintings it's like oh, okay so this is the one that's going for like two I think even on their face they're just like oh okay this is yeah I mean they had texture to them but they were really just a blue painting or yeah. a green painting yeah. or yeah, an very orange boring. painting it was just you know, and that's why it was kind of like, oh, something's going right. on here. Right. And so we're there. They're trying to figure out. They go to the art gallery opening because they can't figure out what's happening. There's a right. client list, and they think they're there's like art fraud. They think they're duplicating the paintings, I yeah. guess, and which wouldn't be very hard to do because they're just blue. Right. So they think there's like <laughs> duplicate paintings that are going to people, and they're all paying fifteen hundred dollars for it. When in reality. When they're at the gallery opening, all three of them get propositioned for sex. Yeah, yeah, which I thought was a really clever spin on this case. And and because who thinks of that? Because, you know, here's Tess looking at this painting like, oh, that's nice. And this guy, he was obviously really quirky and not the most attractive of men. And he's over here like, yeah, it's, it looks like it's this and that. And it's just funny, like the... Um, I want to say analogies that some of these things are going on. Like one girl is talking about painting and she's like, it's so untouched and youthful and blah 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 clearly she's talking about herself and you're like ew yeah <laughs> to this like really old guy but anyways yeah i thought that was a really clever twist that they wrote into to the case yeah and of all people to proposition like tess she's such a hard ass she's gonna be like what i was surprised she didn't i'm surprised yeah. she didn't write yeah. that but they were on a case and whatnot yeah. if you like it you can take it if you don't <laughs> send it right back <laughs> oy, oy, oy. uh please don't touch the artwork please. right right <laughs> okay. but i think it was definitely a great twist, kept me interested, right. kept me wanting to know more. And then you find that one of the hookers, pros prostitutes, I don't I don't want to call her anything demeaning, I guess. We're trying to be politically correct. Yeah, I don't know what the, TV, I don't but know. But it's a little bit challenging when you have an episode. She was a high-end escort. Express you're in are those of the hosts only. You do not necessarily. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. I think she's an escort. There you go. Um, And she was sleeping with the painter. Exactly. Who thought she was worthy of love but she didn't feel that way obviously being in that industry you obviously don't have a lot of no offense to anybody who practices that type of living but you don't have a lot of self-esteem and so then you have a pimp who i did not think was going to be the pimp this lady who is a bartender we think or not bartender but she runs a gallery or yeah, something yeah she, right? she runs the gallery I yeah think she's maybe an assistant or something yeah. to the owner right but turns out she's a madam and she's the whole time telling this girl her name is Daphne. And she's telling Daphne that she's not worth love. And that the guy, Nicholas, who was murdered, he sleeps with girls. He's got plenty of girls. And you're not special. But clearly that was just her own ulterior motive. Because this girl is a high in-demand call girl. And she just want to lose her best, not client, but call girl, I guess. Yeah, I her best know. escort. There I, you go. And so uh, find out, you know, the madam killed the painter. 
because he she wanted her call girl back yeah. or her escort back, and he was willing to pay her off for her. He couldn't afford her, though. But he couldn't afford her. He was willing to try, but yeah. he couldn't afford her, and so she killed him because she couldn't afford to lose Daphne, and she convinced Daphne that he was sleeping with many women, and yeah. he didn't love her. Yeah. But Vincent found his studio, which is just paintings and paintings. To be honest, creep me crazy. out. Mm -hmm. Creep me out. I thought... When he was saying it's not just a guy sleeping with a girl, remember he was like, it's not a guy who's sleeping with a girl. It's a, it's a different level. I thought he was gonna be like, he's a stalker, he's a creep. Yeah, like he's in love. I was like, yeah, whew. I don't know. I don't, if I don't want any guy painting, there was like hundreds yeah. of paintings yeah. of her. Creepy. Yeah, and they weren't even in a relationship. She didn't even realize he loved her like that. That's a little Apparently bit. Apparently, he was willing to get an apartment with her, and she didn't even know. Like, how do you go ahead and get an apartment and plan to live there with your girlfriend? But you've never consulted her on this. And she doesn't even know she's your girlfriend because you've been paying to sleep with her. Like, I... Yeah. You mean to tell... I don't know. Wait. You wait. Well, well, a word from our producer? Yeah, yeah. You mean to tell me that you girls have never been asked out by waking up in a dank basement with 250 paintings of yourself around it? I mean, that was last week. We're talking about this week. So I haven't had that happen this week yet. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Because yes. it's a good tactic, I gotta say. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd have to pass no, no. on that man. In my <laughs> life, uh, I mean, those are just the minor details, obviously. <laughs> I mean, there was murder involved. Yeah. But so it was a pretty, to be honest, it wasn't that confusing. It, there wasn't a long list of people questioned, you know, suspects. Mm -hmm. Not really this episode. Normally yeah. it's, oh, did they do it? Did they do it? Did they do it? It was really just the owner um, right. that they thought he was the one uh Make, do, dealing with fraud or whatnot when in reality it's the madam who did it all. So it was really only two people right. this time, which I think, right. you know, it's pretty open close it, right. once they found out what right. was happening. Well, backtracking a little bit, going into when they do find the paintings, because Vincent finds the paintings, but prior to that whole discovery, he and Kat had a conversation where he was approaching her. He, In his mind, I think he was intending to tell her how he felt, and it just didn't come out. And instead, it turned into this awkward conversation of, well, you know what? She's over here saying, I thought for, for a second there that we could be something and we could do this and we can do that, but you know what? I was wrong. This is complicated, and we should just stick to doing cases. And mm -hmm. so... He's obviously hurt, but not going to say so. So in his mind, he's like, okay, cool. I'm going to stick to cases. So he's going out of his way to help, which he would normally do anyways, but it's just his way of being around her. And he even said something when he showed up to her, because she's like, what are you doing here? I'm working. I had to see you. I mean, I had to help with the case because we're just working on cases. Yeah. You know, she's like, get out. Yeah. You know, and, and I yeah. was a little bit hurt for him that she was doing that. But then he goes and he shows her the, the studio with all the paintings that we were just talking about. And as he's talking about these paintings, I feel like he gives her so much insight to the mind of the killer, but through his own emotion, mm -hmm. regardless if it was this case or the last, he's always given her so much insight. But anyway, he, he's talking about how much this man loves her and that's when he starts speaking about well worth and this and that and da 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 and she's like how do you know well i know what it feels like yeah and that was kind of like oh yeah and then he just disappears yeah she doesn't even say anything back i don't think yeah and he's just gone and i'm yeah. like you gotta be kidding this was the moment this was when they should have kissed right and just side note she does not look like a prostitute. I know they were all high-end looking girls, but Kat's hair is like in this poofy thing. And but she's see, in this like lace dress that's very classy. I was like. And it's bad. It's not even skin tight. It's a little bit loose. Yeah. It doesn't fit right. But here's the thing. She thought she was going to an actual art gallery show. So in her defense, she no, didn't realize I know, she but was going as an undercover. I'm surprised nobody called her out oh. saying, what are you doing here? Like, didn't you know this isn't real? Like, this right. isn't real art? Right. But that was just a side note. Yeah. But because because Tess looks good. Yeah. For once, she looked like they, a They let know, her like look a like a lady. Yeah. I just wish, and maybe it's like the makeup artist in me, <laughs> but I really wish they would just groom her brows. I feel like they just allow her to look so androgynous at times. And I get that she's a detective, but like, gosh, she's pretty. It's yeah, she's very pretty. Like I think it's just the role. I think, they're, I think they're going for a specific thing. Uh, somehow Kat is allowed to look like dainty though and like pink lipstick all the time. Well, and she's like, a star. I know, but you know, I don't know. I'd like to see Tess get some love. Yeah. Get dolled up. Maybe, maybe Tess will date. We'll get to see well, her. Well, she dated that one episode when she I came to that. the, she came to the crime scene with earrings on and she just come from a date. Don't you remember? And the captain <laughs> was like, take your earrings off. And she's like, it was a Friday night. What the, mm, 
Good point. It was like a couple. It was like the second episode. Oh. I swear. Oh. It was a minor detail. I remember like the smallest oh. things. But, anyways, moving okay. on. So moving right along. Also going back into the theme of worth. There's another side story going on with. Catherine's dad, who this is the first time we saw him, and then the wife to be. No, we call fiance. her the, the uh, cheating whore. N- cheating whore, fiance thingy is how. Oh, Kat no, stepmom calls. thingy. Oh, oh, okay, stepmom thingy, who's like 25 or something, and dad's clearly older because he's got Kat's daughters, dad. Yeah. But, uh, anyways, so she's got a, excuse me, she being Cat has to have dinner with, you know, step thingy and she has got to do this fitting with her and all this stuff and of course like every daughter-in-law what is, would it be called daughter to be stepdaughter to be stepdaughter stepdaughter to be should be yeah yeah okay well for like every stepdaughter to be you kind of are a little bit judgmental going into the situation and she's no exception to the rule and so <laughs> she's automatically thinking like this girl is either using my dad or she's something and the girl's like do you think I choose to be in love with who, who moves me, who catches my heart? You don't. She was looking at all the obstacles I've had to go through being with your dad, him being older, my mom is against it, all his friends think I'm a gold dig- digger. You don't exactly like me. So, But if it's the right person and you know inside like it's just the one, it's the one, and it's worth putting up with all of that other extra-ish. Yeah, and I think this is, sho- <laughs> this is showing Kat really – breaking down the walls because she she's very judgmental of her she sees her kissing her ex-husband husband soon to be ex-husband who the fiance supposedly has apparently uh outside he forced himself on her it was pretty obvious yeah. that she pushed him off or whatever apparently they're going through a divorce which cat didn't know and her dad says you know it's hard to have a relationship with you you are so yeah. judgmental and it's good for your job but in order for me to have a relationship with you, it's very difficult to tell you anything. Right. And well, I think that breaks the walls down for her. She's like, I have to change. Right. I have to be different. But, I mean, that's her mom's husband or mom's pet. You know, she's holding on to her mom. I right. It's right. a lot of stuff. Well, you know, when he said that, that actually stuck out to me, too. He said not just have me to have a relationship with you. It's hard for anybody to have a mm-hmm. relationship with you. And I think that's a little bit hurtful, especially coming from your father. And, of course, she's probably thinking not just about dad and fiancé, but Vincent. You're always going to think about the person that you care about in your heart. Yeah, I agree. I don't know what you're all thinking at home, but you should check us out on iTunes. You can rate, comment, tell a friend about it. Tell us what you're thinking about this whole cat Vincent Evan love triangle and how you think the season's progressing since it is a new series. So we'd love to know what you think. And also feel free to suggest anything that you want to see more of. So, yeah, definitely check us out and rate us and tell a friend about us so they can check us out, too, if you think they like Beauty and the Beast. Uh, and drop some news and gossip. We're always looking for news and gossip. Paige and I were just talking about the fact that they're in Canada. Sometimes it's really hard for us mm-hmm. to dig up some good dirt. That, and they just have track records that are clean as a whistle. Squeaky clean. I know. You never really heard much about Kristen Kruick, though, uh, doing anything outlandish. Scandalous. You know, she's no Amanda Bynes. <laughs> Wait, what's going on? Uh, right, yeah. That's a whole nother right. show. A whole nother <laughs> show. Getting off low, the topic. Low. Oh. oh. Not really. So, anyways. <laughs> anyways. Bring out the dancing lobsters. Huh? <laughs> Amanda Bynes uh, reference, yeah. All that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I used to watch it, but okay. I don't remember it. Anyways, so. if you have news and gossip, let us know. Please do. But, yeah, so this episode was pretty cut and dry. I mean, it was... Her trying to figure out her feelings, and I think everybody has this. Whether it's a job or a friendship or with your boyfriend or even with your family, Mm -hmm. you get torn between what's the right decision and what you want. Yeah, but don't you hate – okay, I sometimes I get a little bit annoyed because I feel like she always – it takes something else on the outside for her to realize her own emotions on the inside. She knows how she feels, but it's like almost – she doesn't have the certainty to act on it, so she has to see something happen in one of her cases in order to be like, oh, yeah. Or reassurance from people. It's like so sad to know that she has all these feelings and she has this desire to be with Vincent, yet she won't do it until somebody's like, yeah, you should do that. Right. Like (sighs) – it's like following the trend. Like, just right. because this person's doing it doesn't mean you should. Right. Exactly. Like, if you want to do it, do it. Right. So, I don't know. That was annoying. Yeah. I agree with you on that one. Yeah. But scooting back to the end, to the topic we were talking about in the beginning, but her and and Vincent at the very end of the episode attempting to determine where they are and where they stand. And I think that's more so coming from her because she's tired of being in a position to where she doesn't know. Because, th- again, there is Evan just waiting on the sidelines, like, ready to pounce as soon as she gives him the okay. 
Good thing he's patient. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> but she's really at this point in time, I feel like she's really ready to just say, let's do this. Like, let's be together. Now, at this point, as much as he really wants to, he's still questioning if it's even a good idea. Well, first off, we have contrasting views because I think this was a dream. Oh, see, and I think this is a reality. I can't tell because it went from that to her saying, I'll see you later, Vincent. And then automatically you're running through tunnels and he wakes up in an alley. Ah, covered in blood, might I add. Covered in blood. So I don't know when the blackout happened. Did it happen and he just thought this happened with Kat? Did it happen right after Kat walked out the door? I mean, and what's causing it? It's like my mind at the end of the episode was like, wait, I don't know what happened. See, and I'm like, oh, it happened. It happened. I just think whatever she may have left, and I think he had another blackout and did something crazy. Well, yeah. But I'm hoping that he's – well, I don't know if he's killing people. and The whole blood thing is pretty much insinuating it. I'm just hoping that he's killing people that are, like, bad people. But, Uh, I mean, I guess (laughs) this would be a news and prediction thing, so maybe I should hold off. Or maybe we should just hop into it. Or maybe we should. Let's do that. (laughs) Let's go into our predictions for next week, shall we? Trying to do news? No news? No, we we are just telling our viewers that we're looking for news, so leave us some comments. This week we don't have anything super exciting, I don't think. And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. All right, Paige, would you like to start or would you like to? No, what were you getting at? You were 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 on a track. Okay, so the track I was going, we were talking about the blood and then him being found and... I was going somewhere with this. You don't um, <laughs> yeah, this always happens to me. I'm like, ooh, and then the thoughts interrupted, and I'm like, oh. You said you thought he'd be killing bad guys? Oh, I know what I was going to say. We see a little bit of a section going forth into the next episode, and he's beasting out, and he's saying, well, I think I'm the murderer you're looking for. I don't know how true that is, because every single episode, the murderer has never been him. I think that was happening. Maybe someone gets murdered and he stops it or something happens and he actually kills the bad guy. I just don't see him killing anybody good. I don't see him killing anybody, to be honest. My prediction. I don't think he killed anybody. I think maybe he was wrong place, wrong time, uh, involved in something, like you were saying, with the, the with blood. The, with the blood, because obviously something was happening. Right. Who knows? I mean, you never know. Maybe it's his own blood. Maybe. I don't know if he's like a wolf. I don't know if he's like vampires. You know, he heals real fast. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Guess you guys are going to have to tune in next week to find out. Until then, I'm Ali Kona Bradford. You can follow me on Twitter at KissMyPassport or on Facebook and Tumblr under Ali Kona Bradford. And I am Paige Sullivan, and you can follow me on Twitter at Paige Sell. All right. Thanks, guys, so much, and we will see you next week. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, see you later. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.